Hey guys, Peach out here coming at you with Season 22 PTR Phase 2 feedback. Phase 2 launched last night, October the 8th. We had a couple hours to play with the PTR Phase 2 before we ended up having to log off. But I do want to give some of my initial thoughts and reactions and let you guys see how I feel about the Shadow Clones, the fourth cube slot, some of the server instability. And then also I want to go over the leaderboards really quick and let you guys see how your favorite class is doing after the first day of PTR testing with all of the seasonal buffs active. So make sure you stick around for the leaderboard section near the end. As always, if you like the content, hit the subscribe button and bell notification icon so you never miss a juicy upload. 80% of my viewers are from non-subscribers, so if you like the content, help the channel out, hit the subscribe button. But without further ado, let's get in there and check out the Shadow Clones. When Phase 2 launched, we got a few updates. There weren't sweeping balance changes like we hoped, although I think it's pretty unrealistic to expect after only a few days for the dev team to gather feedback, implement changes, and then get the production team to get those changes pushed live onto the PTR. It does, however, make me nervous that this PTR won't be long enough to fully test all of the things that hope to be implemented into Season 22. I hope Blizzard gives us an extension on the PTR or comes back for round two of PTR testing after they can implement more changes. I'm going to read the developer's notes for phase two. They are in red and I will show them on screen. First, the developer's note says, we appreciate and gathered feedback regarding the initial list of skills from the clones. We have decided to remove all hard crowd control effects from all the kits and balanced each of the build variants to not have a potential buff that is more beneficial than the other two in the same class. And then the second change that we got was bug fixes. And really they talked about fixing client crashes, wizard spike procs more often, no double dipping of trag ghouls anymore. Blessed hammer destroys itself after 63 hits. And they tried to fix the energy twister lag by reducing the tick rate, but upping the damage. But that's all we got as far as updates since phase one, all they really did was just flip the switch and churn on the seasonal theme. Uh, so speaking of the seasonal themes, let's talk about it. Shadow clones. Shadow clones spawn every time you click a pylon. They last for one minute and you can have multiple clones out at the same time. There's no visual timer how long each clone lasts. There's no pet icon or companion icon. They're rather unnoticeable. In fact, I hardly even notice that they're there except things are dying faster. But things usually die faster when you click a pylon anyways. So you really don't even feel them that much. I have to pause action on the screen and try to find them to even see where they're at and what they're doing. They do seem to put out some damage though. In my early seasonal testing, they were solo Rift Guardians in two shots without any help from me. I'm not 100% sure how their damage will scale for super crazy high greater rifts, but you can get multiple clones making their importance in group play even more valuable and having 8 to 12 clones running around and shooting things for you is pretty awesome. During the leveling process for the season, they were also pretty beneficial, destroying trash as we leveled up. They also came with some bugs. A few times my clones would randomly bug out, not attack anything, and just stand there the whole time. Or I had a team member's clone just glitch out next to me the entire time. It looks like they may need a little more polish, but all in all, it's a pretty decent accompanying seasonal theme. If this were the only feature of Season 22, I don't think it could carry on its own, but since it's also paired with the fourth cube slot, I think it's a plus one in my book. Speaking of the cube slot, boy, oh boy. It added some awesome build diversity to every single build in the game. I don't care what you play, what you like, it's better. The interface looks nice. Unfortunately, the fourth cube slot doesn't show up on the character sheet or on the leaderboard inspections. The only way to see what you have in the fourth cube slot is to walk up to the cube and click on it. That being said, this fourth cube slot is fun. It adds more thought to any build you make in the game. I kind of hope this feature sticks around long after season 22. Do you guys want it to stay? Let me know in the comment section below. I would really love to get some community feedback on this. I'm curious if I'm one of the only people that wants this to stick around for the future or if you guys agree with me. The testing ended a little short as the server stability went south after a few hours of testing for me. I kept getting a bug where I was unable to click anything, leave the game, or even exit the game. I was being forced to Alt F4 close the Diablo client and then restart, which usually took a couple minutes for me to even be able to log back in. Eventually the servers went to over a 3000 plus ping and it was basically impossible to even play at that point. Blizzard at the time of this video acknowledged the issue and they're working on fixing it as we speak. 
I just hope that the PTR servers are old and junky and this aren't bug issues that are going to be introduced into the client when it actually pushes live. Really fast ladder recap for you guys in case you're wondering how your favorite class is doing. I'm going to really quickly show you a screenshot of the seasonal ladder for each class along with a rough idea of the paragon levels of those classes so you guys can kind of see how your favorite class is stacking up or what you're deciding to play this season. Crusader's Paragon is 2,500 to 2,900, and the top clear at the time of this is a 146, with second and third place being 140, fourth place being a 139. So Crusader is super, super powerful. Next up, we have Necromancer. Necromancer's Paragon ranged from 1,500 to about 1,700, with the top clear being a 132, uh, the variance in Necro wasn't as big as we saw in Crusader, followed up by Barbarian, whose Paragon ranged in the 1700-ish. Their top clear was a 126, followed up by a 124 and a 120. Demon Hunter's Paragon was around 1700 is also. Their top clear is a 136, followed up by a 133 and a 132. Monk's Paragon was in the 500-ish range. Their top clear was a 127, followed up with a 125 and a 123. Witch Doctor's Paragon was 1600-ish, with the top clear being a 133, second 127, third 122. And then last but not least, we have Wizard, whose Paragon ranged from 1700 to 2700. There was a pretty big gap between the top couple guys and some of the bottom. Uh, but the top clear on Wizard was a 125, followed by the 123, a couple 123s, and then some 122s. As always, if you like the content, hit the subscribe button and bell notification icon. You can come hang out with the live streams while we're testing all this PTR stuff. Twitch.tv forward slash the Child. My stream schedule is in the description below. And I will catch you guys soon. Peace.